name is Dan Plotnik. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO with Apiro. Um, Apiro is an uh, ASPM platform, application security posture management. And we will talk today about code to runtime API security. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Patrick Sullivan, uh, I'm with uh, Akamai Technologies. Uh, and we will focus on sort of the, the runtime to code protection of APIs. Uh, so quick agenda. We'll uh, start with a few trends uh, currently in the industry with a few interesting attacks. We'll talk about the API security challenges from code to runtime. And um, we will see how we can solve the problem with a live demo and Q&A. Let's start. Yeah. So the first thing is, this is kind of brand new from uh, brand new slide from Gartner, which uh, stating the obvious. Uh, a lot of customers, a lot of our customers, are using Copilot and other Gen AI technologies, and it actually expon like you see an exponential growth in the amount of code that is being developed with the same amount of developers. And as the amount of code and the pace of coding grows, it's so hard to keep up with security reviews. And you have so many APIs, I will show you in a second, real data from 10 large enterprises. Um, I don't know if it will be a surprise for you, but uh, there is no way that you can review every API that you add to your code base and to your applications. So, as I said, um, this is from 10 large enterprise customers, and we see a huge spike in the new APIs developed in a um, specific quarter. Um, and what we see here is by the way, based on BISIM, um, the amount or the ratio between AppSec engineers to developers is 1 to 159, which means that they cannot keep up with the pace of reviewing these APIs and say, is this API is behind uh, um, implemented input validation or authorization and other stuff. And a lot of these risks are actually getting into runtime, which Patrick will... Um, talk more. Just a little bit about the technology that we developed. It's called, uh, it's a patented technology called DCA, Deep Code Analysis. So we actually scan code and we automatically map across 15 languages all your APIs in development. So if you do a git push into your code repo and you introduce a new RESTful API or other types of APIs, we will automatically detect it and then we'll say there is a material change or a risky change to these APIs while developing. For example, you added the API without encryption. Um, you added the API that exposed PII data and stuff like that. And this is how we help um, large organizations to keep up, to first know how many APIs they have in their code bases and two, track and keep up with the pace of development and review, run security reviews before runtime on these API um, risks. Perfect. Uh, so as, as Adon was alluding to, you know, seeing a lot of risk escape sort of the, the various checks that take place, uh, I guess beginning even in the design phase all the way through the SDLC and make their way through to runtime. Uh, from Akamai's perspective, we just observed sort of a year-over-year -year increase in attacks targeting APIs uh, of about 110%. Uh, and on any you know, given day, we see uh, about 3 billion uh, DOS requests directed towards APIs, typically the most fragile part of an organization if you want to try to uh, attack an organization. Uh, we see uh, around 7 billion sort of injection-style uh, attacks targeting APIs on a busy day. And uh, you know, essentially, APIs, the largest risk is probably auth. We see more than 24 billion requests from bots, uh, primarily directed towards auth uh, APIs, uh, much of which is uh, credential stuffing, right? Attempting to, to um, 
to replay credentials uh, that have been breached somewhere else against that auth interface. Uh, and when we see these things break down, as, as uh, Adam was highlighting, with the pace of uh, change with these APIs, uh, they're escaping the, the scanning process in many cases. Uh, and, and often, you know, one of the challenges that we see with, uh, with runtime API security is just asset inventory, understanding as sort of a, an application security team where all of your APIs are that, that need to be protected. Uh, so if we look at a couple of sort of open source uh, examples here in, in sort of recent weeks, uh, you know, these are all uh, great companies that have publicly responsibly disclosed uh, incidents, but it's very common uh, patterns that we see leading to, uh, to risk for APIs. Uh, I think we're probably six weeks out from uh, Dell Computer suffering a, a, an API attack that led to customer data being sold on uh, you know, the dark web, essentially, where you could pull in user information. Uh, and, and this particular attack, as we often see, was, was sort of a breakdown in, in Auth-Z. You know, the type of risk that you often cannot see uh, throughout your SDLC. You don't see these type of risks till you get to, to runtime. Uh, classic sort of red teamer technique uh, where you know, the, the adversary went through and signed up for a partner account. Uh, that's kind of classic uh, web app pen testing. See if you can sign up for a privileged account and get a different response from the application, and, and that was just the case. Uh, once you signed up as any partner, uh, there was a breakdown in authorization allowing you to see uh, essentially all customer information and pull that down via that API. Uh, classic breakdown in business logic, which is uh, one of the harder things to find for an attacker, but definitely also one of the harder things for defenders to remove uh, as a vulnerability in that application. Next, uh, you know, we, we see here in the middle uh, NVIDIA, which is uh, a company that is breaking records, right? Never before in history has a company generated uh, revenue growth or, or, or market capitalization growth like NVIDIA has done. They're breaking all the records. But even sort of in the most modern applications out there, an API into their AI platform, uh, unfortunately, they, they ended up with one of the, the, the probably longest lived vulnerabilities out there, sort of a path tra traversal vulnerability uh, that uh, you would think, you know, potentially could have been caught in the SDLC, but as is, is Adon alluded to, the, the pace with which, you know, many of these APIs are being produced, it's impossible to catch everything. Uh, so those are the type of things we see. Uh, and then, a, you know, an API risk, a, again, sort of coming back to, you uh, sort of a breakdown in, in authorization um, for Grafana, but I think the interesting piece here is this may be part of your estate, uh, even if it's not your code. It may not be part of your SDLC, it may be something that is a tool that you're leveraging in part of your organization where you're at risk uh, through third party uh, supply chain. Adon, do you so, wanna? Yeah, so, so just, just to sum up uh, before we move on, so you saw from only 10 large enterprises, more than 90,000 new APIs in a very short period of time. And all these APIs eventually reach production and doesn't go through the um, scanning or security review mechanisms that you have or other large enterprises or mid enterprises have. And this is why it's so important, and in a second we'll talk about the challenges, but this is why it's so important to have a code to runtime uh, API security strategy. So let, let's talk a little bit about the challenges from both sides, okay? So again, we, we took the, the top two. There are top 50. Uh, so, so we will talk about uh, um, the major ones. The, the, the first one is the complexity of API development. So nowadays there are so many different technologies to develop the APIs and totally different forms of the same API in Java can look differently in many frameworks. And Gen AI now added, you know, <laughs> more forms of, of new APIs that, that an automatic, automatic tool needs to um, discover. And the second one is when you develop APIs, you don't have the context 
of what's going on in runtime to be able to prioritize the risk of these APIs. Um, I do want to say that one, one thing that is common across both uh, API in code and NPI in runtime, it's exactly what Patrick said. When we go to customers and we ask them how many APIs you have in the code base, how many APIs you have in runtime, no one has an answer. It's a real, real problem that starts with the fundamental of security, of knowing what you have. Yeah, and, and then we'll hit that from the runtime. I, I guess maybe a, a question from the audience. Uh, show of hands, who, who feels kind of within plus or minus 5% that you have an accurate feel for the number of APIs across your organization? OK, uh, well, it's good. No, no, no liars in this room. Uh, that, that's good to see. Uh, but but as, as Adam was alluding to, just the pace with which we see these APIs being published is leading to kind of a, uh, at the runtime, a, a very, very fundamental kind of first principle uh, of security, you, you know, you need to, to understand where your assets are uh, before you can begin to protect them. Uh, and that's a challenge, and, and I think one of the themes that hopefully you'll take away from, from our conversation today is this, this lack of context, the disconnect between what's happening in the SDLC and what's happening at the runtime is, is sort of at the heart of, of many of these visibility uh, challenges that we face. But, but that is a challenge that we look to solve both in the SDLC and in the runtime and marry that up uh, so regardless of the source of, of an API, whether it's first party authored, it's part of your supply chain, it's part of your infrastructure, that is all made uh, visible to the security team and, and proper uh, postures put in place there. By the way, I have a quick question. How many of you are developers versus security engineers here in the room? Developers? Security engineers? Half. <laughs> 50%. Uh, so I, I think it's also an, a problem of persona. We as a developer, OK, I, I'm, I was a GM for software engineering at Microsoft. I was developing APIs. My team developed APIs on a daily basis. We didn't know or own the security of these APIs in runtime. These, this, this was a different team, different ownership. And I think the, the this, the, this, I would say, this connection between uh, these two personas of the security engineer and the developers, it's another thing that we need to solve as an industry and what we are trying to do with this partnership with, between Apiro and Akamai. Um, yeah, and, and before we move on, I guess kind of that final piece, it's, it's sort of the mass matchmaking between the, the two constituencies. Uh, at the runtime, uh, if, if the application security team does find themselves uh, in a situation where there's a first party API that, that, that has one of these Auth Z breakdowns or some other defect, uh, often it's, it's a challenge to figure out who exactly the appropriate developer uh, is that they need to work with and, and where exactly in the code that lies. That's another challenge we're trying to solve, uh, you know, really, as you see here at the bottom, with the intent of speeding up remediation as well as uh, the pace of code change. I think we, we hear the same thing again and again when talking to, um, you know, this is what we're doing every day, talking to developers and security engineers. And they told us that they invest hours and hours in understanding who is the code owner that owns this API to be able to fix it. It's a lot of time that is wasted um, and the mean time to remediation, which is a KPI for the security team, goes up instead of going down. Um, and we'll talk about this in a second. So let's look at the, um, at, at the development lifecycle, OK? So I would say that I don't have the exact number, but most of the security issues for APIs could be solved even before they get to runtime. Uh, but as we showed earlier, the velocity doesn't uh, allow that. But everything starts from a missing authorization, missing authentication. And from there, you are uh, publishing this API without the knowledge of the AppSec, because if I have 90,000 APIs, 
I cannot go and, and review them or make sure they are scanned by every tool. Another problem that we face is that I'm publishing or deploying my APIs, but they're not uh, protected in runtime behind the WAF or um, API security in runtime. And then you don't have the security controls in runtime, which one, makes it so hard to know how many APIs do I have, but even worse, they are not protected. Um, so, so as we move across this, this uh, is an anonymous example, but, but there is uh, a breach that looks very much like this, that's the, uh, the uh, target of a class action lawsuit where there's discovery of uh, remediation and, uh, and everything, so all the details likely will come out there. But I think when, when we look at each of these steps, there's so many opportunities uh, for, from the development team to the, to the AppSec team, uh, to security ops to, to prevent uh, sort of a catastrophic breakdown here. Uh, but when, when you miss that linkage, if that API is a shadow API, gets published outside of uh, you know, the appropriate architecture at the runtime to provide uh, protection, that exacerbates things as, as you move from that, that core defect, which was bad, but maybe not the end of the world, uh, if you had a compensating control, but it's not behind uh, web application protection, you're not doing runtime sort of anomaly detection to figure out that uh, you know if you see somebody go grab an, an auth token and over time, over millions of users, one auth token is one customer ID, and then all of a sudden a Don comes by one day, one day, and he grabs one auth token and you know 50 million uh, you know customer IDs with that interaction, those type of things you can pick off. Uh, and even at sort of last line of defense, uh, you know, even if you have that breakdown, uh, preventing that from uh, becoming something that impacts thousands or, or hundreds of thousands or millions of users, that's all automation there. So if, even if as a last line of defense you have anti-automation, at least you're slowing the attacker down uh, to give SecOps time to, to intervene. Uh, but when things get really bad, it's, it's basically when there's a failure across all and every one of these opportunities are missed. And I, I want to double click on that. Each one of these steps where you can actually catch this breach, they're not aware of each other. So these are siloed steps and they don't have one, like let's call it context across all these stages. So think about the uh, an API security in runtime that is aware that an API is coming or will be deployed in the next day. And, and I think this is, this is one of the biggest problems in, in API security where you don't have the context end to end across all these stages. So what's the solution? So, so we think protecting APIs really needs to span, uh, you know, from the, the design phase through the SDLC, through the, the runtime. Starting at the runtime, uh, you know, APIs have a unique uh, attack surface, right? You know, we do see uh, classic uh, injection attacks. I think probably the, the most impactful API uh, attack last year was actually a SQL injection directed towards an API. Uh, so, so all of those kind of, um, you know, basic checks on the uh, integrity of a request to make sure that there's not a, uh, a malicious payload, you know, in line. Those still carry over from classic web apps to APIs. But the unique uh, risks with APIs begins with sort of that asset discovery, right? So you first need to know where your APIs are. Uh, so performing uh, discovery at the runtime, uh, basically reviewing traffic that traverses your your API gateways, your proxies, uh, on the workloads themselves to develop a, a, an inventory at the runtime of, of your own APIs, APIs that are part of your infrastructure, uh, to marry that up with uh, sort of your uh, other controls there, right? Beginning with discovery. Reviewing the posture of, of your APIs to ensure that they've been uh, authored correctly. And then at the runtime, uh, you know, looking at the behavior of, of APIs, right? As you learn, uh, the nice part about APIs is that they should be very consistent. If you have a partner API, often there's an identical pattern of interaction on that API over tens or hundreds of thousands of requests. And then when you see uh, you know, that business logic abuse, it's very anomalous from normal users, right? So it's profiling each API, how it's used, uh, 
and then identifying at the runtime if you see breakdown in, in known patterns. So we've spoken a lot about authorization. That's a really easy one to pick up from a, uh, basically an anomaly detection pattern. If, if you look at sort of the, the, the way that an auth grant is, is uh, consumed uh, with resources, that will stand out when you see those, uh, those abuse patterns emerge. Yeah. On um, so now let's move to the code, okay? So at the code, we actually are taking three steps. The first step is we are saying, okay, connect us to the source control manager, GitHub, GitLab, Azure DevOps, Bitbucket, whatever you are using via read-only API. We will use the technology that I, alluded, I mentioned earlier, um, the DCA, the deep code analysis, and we will scan all the code base throughout the history and we'll tell you how many APIs you have in this code base across the history, from t equals zero until today. And it's not only to tell me that I have 32,000 APIs in my code base, I want to understand who changed them, when, when I'm saying change, it's not like git blame where I put space in a, or write a comment uh, next to the API. Actually change the data model uh, exposed in the return type new uh, fields and so on and so forth. So I want to actually have an audit trail for all these APIs to be able to identify the code owner because maybe it's not in my organization anymore and stuff like that. So scan the code, map how many APIs I have, show me an audit trail across all these APIs. This is step number one, okay? By the way, when we um, discover all these APIs in your code bases, we also understand the security controls. So do you use um, Spring Boot for authentication, or do you use uh, Bouncy Castle for encryption in this code module that holds all these uh, APIs? So we do a very deep um, uh, assessment of your code base and map all the inventory and the changes. The second thing is we connect to Akamai to runtime. And then we run a matching algorithms between the endpoints in runtime to the APIs in the code. And from understanding who is the code owner, we automatically open a pull request with the missing authorization or missing authentication or other risks that we consume from runtime. And uh, th this is a very, very uh, complex task because one endpoint can be multiple RESTful APIs in the code across multiple code modules, across multiple repos. So you need to get a lot of context from runtime to map it uh, to the code base. And the goal here is to say, okay, I have 90,000 uh, APIs, okay, 60% of them are risky, but I need to understand what will impact my business. So I don't care, it's great that I have a SQL injection, but maybe it's in a test application. Maybe it's an application without PII data or, or other stuff. So we enrich the alert from runtime by deeply understanding what is the actual business impact of this API based on the data that you have in the code base and we eventually trigger a remediation action, open a ticket, send a Slack message, open a pull request, and more and more. The last phase, which is the most uh, advanced one, is to say I want a single uh, pane of glass where I see all of my, in this case, all of my API risks, but I can see all the application uh, risks in one place, but the interesting stuff is to go and prevent, put developer guardrails at the pull request before you deploy to production. So if I can codify with policy as code my risks appetite and say, if I see an API that is dealing with money transfer uh, without authorization in a high business impact repository with sensitive data, I want to block the pull request and I want to alert the developer and tell her 
or him that they are going to introduce a huge risk to the business and they need to do A, B, C, D to fix the risk before they deploy to production. So this is the last phase of preventing and of course measuring that the MTTR goes down, that the risk goes down before we um, uh, deploy to production. So now the combined uh, version. So as I said, we connect to Akamai. Akamai in runtime uh, discover all the APIs by analyzing network traffic and detect the post or assess the poster and detect risks in runtime. We ingest all the inventory that Akamai found in runtime, match it to uh, APIs in the code, and then augment the risks on top of them to be able to say, as, as I said earlier, this is the code owner, and this is the application, and this is what you need to do to actually fix the risk in the code. And we can even take it further in most cases, not in most, but in some cases, depends on the organization uh, policy. Some of the security controls are not even in your code. So we can say we didn't find any authorization mechanism, not only on this API, across all APIs in code. And then we can say the authorization or authentication mechanism is in the API gateway or in other places. So we can also uh, uh, trigger a mechanism to remediate it from the DevOps side that, are, that owns the API gateways and stuff like that. So what I'm trying to say is that the remediation suggestion takes all the context, calculate it, and eventually trigger it to the right person with the right suggestion. Um, anything that you want to add? Yeah, maybe a case study there. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, what we're doing in application security comes down to prioritization, right? So one example that, that I would call out is, is sort of, uh, you know, we saw an API at a very large financial that worked its way through the SDLC, and it escaped with, I think, one finding on Veracode that was sort of a two out of 10, right? And most organizations, you know, the sun will burn out of hydrogen before you get to a two out of 10 on your DAS scanner, right? It's just so far down the uh, list of things to do. Uh, but then at the runtime, what we saw is that that API was uh, susceptible to enumeration, right? So there was a jerk there that was manipulating some of the, the characters in the API to increment numbers, and, and unfortunately, the API was susceptible to that, so they were able to move from uh, you know, one bit of one call to, a, to an adjacent call. Uh, so that's something that very hard to see in the SDLC, very easy to see at the runtime when you're looking at request over request. Yeah. So we sent that through uh, to, uh, to Apiro, uh, basically informing them of what's happening at the runtime. Uh, Adon enriches that and basically bumps that up from a two out of 10 to, uh, you know, this, this requires immediate attention. And in the process, enriches that with uh, the information uh, that was pulled from SCM that basically says, you know, Patrick Sullivan was, Sullivan was the developer. There was a code change that went into place you know, last Tuesday at 3 p.m. that led to this. Uh, let's drop that in, in, uh, in a JIRA for, for me to go remediate as the developer to, to, to number one, solve the uh, prioritization challenge to move that to the proper priority within the organization, and then number two, solve the ownership challenge, who, uh, routing that to the person who uh, is best able to make that change. Yeah, I, I do want to say on you know, even before the prioritization, what we see that most organizations send the API security risks in runtime to the SOC team. But, but the SOC team doesn't know what is an API. They don't understand, they don't have the proper domain knowledge, and even if they want to fix it, they cannot, because the developer eventually needs to fix the risk. So this is another huge challenge that we faced by implementing an application, an API security program in these large enterprises. Um, so you want to skip that and move to the? Or Go ahead. Uh, no. Well, I, I guess just maybe, maybe this is a summary, and then we'll uh, spare you yeah. further uh, PowerPoint and, and get into. Uh, 
uh, into a CLI here. Uh, but basically, if we look at that example earlier, uh, you know, where we sort of had that catastrophic uh, exposure of that API, uh, when you link sort of what's happening in the SDLC with the runtime, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're basically performing discovery at multiple locations that are interlocked with one another, dramatically reducing the chances of, of sort of having that shadow API that gets published outside of established security controls. Uh, when you are observing at the runtime sort of the behavior of an API, you can see these things where you're breaking down uh, authorization. Uh, and, and ultimately, uh, we feel you probably have six or seven shots to prevent uh, you know, that, that catastrophic failure scenario. And, and as you link these things together and have the right controls, uh, dramatically reduce the risk of, of that happening. Yeah. I, th I think this is where you know, the magic happens, where you can actually see the matching between the code and runtime. This makes people say, hey, now I understand. Now I see what I'm missing from a visibility point of view, prioritization, and also remediation. Um, so maybe, again, one slide before we jump into the demo. Uh, hopefully, we, yeah, we have time. Um, just want to share the context that we enrich from both sides, OK? So Apiro identify, first, we didn't write it here, but we are saying it again and again in the last uh, uh, 15 minutes. Uh, we detect and discover all your APIs in the code and Akamai detects and discover all your APIs in runtime. So first and foremost, we exchange um, the fundamental, which is the inventory. Then we detect the code owners, um, the root cause in the code, which line of code this API or this input validation is missing, where, uh, what's the actual uh, uh, impact is maybe it's across shared code module, so you fix it in one place and you fix uh, like something like blast radius across multiple uh, APIs, and we detect the business impact of the code repository based on um, the data that you have in the data models. Um, on the runtime, so of course we understand is this API deployed is this API internet exposed? Because you can deploy an API, but maybe it's a backend um, and talks with another microservice and does not expose to the internet. Uh, is it behind a WAF API gateway? And what, of course, are the risks and the attack patterns? So this is the context that we exchange from a code to runtime. So you want to see demo? <laughs> uh, okay, so let's start with the boring stuff. Um, where do you connect? By the way, can you see? Can you see? Great. So uh, you go to the connectors page. Just a second. I think I'm because I connected. Okay. So you go to the connectors page and you search for Akamai. And you just add, um, it's very, very easy. You put an access token. It's already connected to the uh, Akamai data lake, um, to the graph API, and you press connect. From that moment, uh, we actually, let me go here. Do, 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 do. Uh, just a sec. I just connected my laptop to the internet, so it will take a second. So uh, you, from the moment you connect um, a, a Piro into Akamai, we, as I said, ingest all the inventory. And uh, just a sec. So we detect all the APIs in your code base, okay? So this is from scanning, scanning the actual code base. And you say, in this line of code, this is the API in this language, and so on and so forth. But when you connect a Piro to a Akamai, then we do the matching, and we say, okay, I have this API, okay, slash token, this is the HTTP method, Okay, uh, we discovered it in the code in 
uh, April, okay, and you can see where it's in the code. So this is the actual RESTful API uh, implementation in the code. And you can see in which code module, not only which repo, what's the technology, what's the API declaration. In some cases, which hopefully I will find in a second, uh, we can also see missing authorization or authentication or input validation. And we match it to, as you can see, this is a risk that was discovered. This API was uh, added to the code in April. This is today. <laughs> uh, so we have a new um, uh, risks from runtime. So we ingest that. We match it to the API in the code. We can uh, show you the description, the severity, and also, which is so, super, super important, the request and the response header and body from runtime. Because you cannot lo look at these uh, data points. You cannot, from scanning code, understand uh, the request header and body and why it's so important. Because now you can actually simulate this attack. As, as a security um, engineer, I have all the data to now go and validate the, the, uh, the, um, um, the risk in runtime in my test environment. And this is very, very important information. We uh, provide remediation action. And for every uh, API, we know who is the code owner. So who actually added this API and when? And from here, we can manually go and take an action and send him a Slack message or a JIRA ticket or create a workflow to automatically do that and we don't need to manually do anything uh, that requires um, triage or remediation. Um, I think I have here another example. Um, not for authorization, let's see. The demo gods, uh, missing authorization. Perfect. Okay, so in this case, just a sec. Let's find another one. Uh, doing it live. Uh, missing authorization. Let's see. By the way, this is time for questions. Any questions? Uh, when you say APIs, do you really mean all APIs versus the third party? Or the this is a good. Such a, such a great question. Um, so let's double click. The short answer is yes. The long one is Akamai sees all the APIs. If it's in the source code, not in source code, like let me be crystal clear. Akamai sees all the APIs that are in runtime um, and regardless if they have access to source code or not. Okay, so third-party APIs, first-party APIs, they will see. We, we will not see, let's say, third-party APIs. There is one caveat, okay? So if you use, for example, OpenAI framework in your code base, okay? You implement OpenAI in your code base. This is an exit point from the application to a third-party APIs. This case, if it's, if it's in the source code, we will be able to detect it. If it's not there and you implemented, I don't know, you deployed an application on a Kubernetes cluster or whatever, and this application goes and, and interacts with third party, this is Akamai. So just one caveat, you know, at the runtime, Akamai is basically observing traffic, looking at logs, looking at, at activity. So we need to be able to see that traffic passing. So that would mean, we need to tap in some way uh, some choke point or the workload itself uh, so the, the third party API or the first party API would need to pass a proxy 
a load balancer, an API gateway, a VPC, uh, you know, a, a, a workload where we have an agent. As long as it hits one of those points, we're going to pull that off into analysis and catch it at the runtime. So uh, two things that I want to show you. One is I found it. I found a missing authorization example. So what we are doing is not just telling you you're missing authorization, but we are actually telling you that other APIs in this code repo implemented authorization with a link to code samples that implemented the authorization. So we can take this example and give it to the developer and say, hey, look, your friend in this code repo on APIs in the same language implemented the authorization. So this is just an advanced way to do um, guided remediation to developers. The last thing that I want to show you is the coverage page, which is a huge problem for our mutual customers. You deployed something like API security in runtime, but you don't know the coverage. You have so many code repos. So we are actually doing a matching between Akamai API security in runtime to the repos, and we can understand if you cover 90% of my repos, 10%, 5%, and then you can have a project and say, great, you cover only one repo, okay? But I have so many, so now I can prioritize it as a project and increase the coverage of my API uh, protection uh, in runtime. Uh, so that's it. This, is, this was um, API security, code to runtime. Hopefully you understand the importance of, uh, of that, this, of this approach. And if you have any other questions, we are here. Thank you.